Summary of Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Four. Oscar Shell is a nine-year-old boy who lost his father, Thomas Shell, on September 11, 2001, when terrorists attacked the World Trade Center. Oscar is a very smart and interested boy who comes up with all kinds of strange ideas, but he is also scared and has been through a lot. Oscar feels terrible because his father left five phone messages on September 11, but he hasn't told anyone about them. Even worse, he hasn't told anyone that he was in the apartment when his father called for the last time, but he was too scared to answer the phone. Even though Oscar was never as close to his mother as he was to his father, he is getting even further away from her. Even though he loves and cares for his grandmother, he is still sad and lonely. In his dad's closet, Oscar finds a key in a package that says Black. Oscar plans to find every person in New York City with the last name Black to try to figure out what the key opens. One of the people Oscar talks to lives in the same building as Oscar. Even though this Mr. Black hasn't left his flat in 24 years, he goes on Oscar's trip. On his journey, Oscar goes to every part of New York City. He has to get over a lot of his fears. For example, he takes the train, eats food that isn't vegan, crosses bridges, and puts himself in the hands of strangers. When Oscar and Mr. Black go to the top of the Empire State Building to meet Ruth Black, who hasn't left the top of the Empire State Building since her husband died many years ago. After that, Mr. Black quits the trip, leaving Oscar feeling just as alone and abandoned as when he started. There is also a story about Oscar's grandparents in the book. Grandpa, whose name is also Thomas Schell, was in Dresden, Germany, when it was hit with firebombs during World War II. Almost everyone important to Grandpa died in the blast, including his girlfriend Anna, his unborn son, and his parents. Grandpa lost his ability to talk because of what happened and how it made him feel. He has yes and no tattooed on his hands, and he carries around a daybook where he writes notes to converse. Several of the chapters are written as letters from Grandpa to his unborn son. This son could be Oscar's dad or the child that his lover Anna was carrying when she died in Dresden. Grandpa moved to New York after Dresden was bombed and that's where he met Grandma. He knows her from Germany. Anna's grandmother is her sister. Grandpa can't talk right now, but they can still talk to each other through signs and the daybook. Grandpa, who is a sculptor, has Grandma pose naked for him, but the model just looks like Anna. Grandpa and Grandma get married, even though Grandpa is still in love with Anna. They divide the flat into nothing and something zones and make up complicated rules that limit how much they talk to each other. But Grandma gets pregnant, which is against their rules. Grandpa leaves Grandma and flies back to Dresden before Dad is born. On September 11, Grandpa watches the bombing on TV, and in the newspapers, he sees Dad's name. Grandpa gets on a plane to Manhattan right away, even though it's been 40 years since he was last in the US. He calls Grandma even though he can't talk, and then he leaves her notes. Eventually, she lets him move back into the apartment, but only into the guest room. In addition to the letters from Grandpa, Jonathan Safran Four adds a long letter from Grandma to Oscar that is spread out over several chapters. Grandma is telling Oscar about her life in a letter. Throughout the book, it's not clear why Grandma is sending Oscar such a long letter when she lives in the next building and they see each other every day. But at the end of the book, the letter shows that Grandma and Grandpa now live in the airport. She has persuaded him to stay with her there instead of flying away after Oscar's quest, so they can be together. When Oscar meets the renter, which is Grandpa, and tells him the whole story about his dad and the search for the lock that the key opens, the two stories come together. Oscar also checks his phone texts for the first time in eight months and finds a message from Abby Black, the second Black he had visited. She says that William, her husband, knows where the key goes. The message stops in the middle. When Oscar goes to see Abby, he finds out why the message ends in the middle, Mom picked up the phone and asked what was going on, so Abby told her everything. It looks like Mom has been watching the trip the whole time. In fact, so has Grandpa. Oscar goes to William's office and gives him the key, 
which William says is for his dad's safe deposit box. When William opens the box, he offers to take Oscar with him, but Oscar says no. Oscar and Grandpa go to the graveyard on the second anniversary of Dad's death to dig up Dad's empty coffin. Grandpa puts the letters to his son that he hasn't sent yet in the grave. Jonathan Safran Foer's way of telling a story is both verbal and graphic. When characters take pictures or talk about pictures, they usually show up in the middle of a story. There are often parts of Grandpa's daybook in the letters he sends. At the end of the book, Oscar's flipbook shows a man falling off a building, but the pictures are in the wrong order, so it looks like the man is going up. About the author Jonathan Safran Foer is from a Jewish, educated family. His mother's parents survived the Holocaust. After Foer graduated from Princeton, he went to Ukraine to find out where his family came from. For used this trip as part of his Princeton thesis, which he used to write his first novel, Everything is Illuminated. The book is a mix of historical fiction and autobiography, with two separate plots that are linked. For second book, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close, adds visuals and a more complicated way of telling the story than in his first book. For has written a lot of different kinds of books since Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. His third book, Eating Animals, is a non-fiction book about factory farming and slaughterhouses. In it, he talks about how he became a vegetarian and why he thinks these things are wrong. For tries out different styles in all of his work. His novel Tree of Codes is a mix of a story and a sculpture. To make it, he took letters and words from the book The Street of Crocodiles by Polish author Bruno Schultz and put them into a new story. He wrote an opera libretto and edited many works, including the Future Dictionary of America and a new Haggadah translation. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.